The New York Knicks also went into Cleveland, like like the Cavaliers, as an underdog in this game. and got the 101-97 win. Look, there are a couple of different issues with this Cavaliers team. And Wall, coming into the year, I had very high expectations wow. on them. One thing I understood is that their bench is dog shit. Um, you look at the playoffs this year, you've got teams like the Nuggets and the Suns who they lack depth. But the Cavaliers, I mean, Karis LeVert coming off the bench, Dean Wade, those minutes were an absolute train wreck. I think, what's his face? LeVert made one shot. There's just a lot of names, a lot of guys like Ricky Rubio coming off the torn ACL, but no one you could actually rely on. Jetty, Jetty Osmond gave him some good minutes, but what the Cavaliers had in this game was constant two-on-ones on the ball because the Knicks were pressuring them. They have Mitchell Robinson at the rim, and you kind of forget Isaac Okoro is out there because they're not playing him as their fifth starter, and that was what gave the Knicks the edge. On the offensive glass, they won this game, and the Cavaliers were just exhausted throughout the entire matchup by the end. Good news, there's two days of rest between this game and game two. But for the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that has no depth this year, they'll go up against a Knicks team that is eight or nine guys truly deep that can all add something different. The big X factor in this series, I don't think it's going to be Julius Randle or Jalen Brunson. It's going to come down to that Knicks bench. It's going to come down to Mano quickly. He missed all five of his three-pointers, but still made a difference on defense. He's a player that, unlike Isaac Okor, he actually had to play from behind the three-point line. And I think this Knicks team, for how much they get on the offensive glass, against a Cleveland team that gets no rebounding from the one through three spots, this this year is, I had it go into six games. I think it's going to seven. This was an absolute rock fight. And though there weren't a lot of shots falling, Cleveland shot 32%, and Knicks shot 27 This series might be the most exciting in the Eastern Conference. Oh, yeah, in the Eastern Conference, no doubt, 100%. Uh, I'm going to say something, right? I, I underestimated the New York Knicks bench, right? I think I probably overestimated the Ca- Cleveland Cav- Cavaliers bench. Because uh, with, with Brunson being in early foul trouble, the bench and the depth of, of New York was able to really pick up uh, and, and I mean, ke- not even just keep them in there. They had the lead uh, going into the half. So he only play- Brunson played nine minutes in the first half. And they had the lead. So that that's just a big plus. You knew that was a big plus going into half. And that's not a good thing for Cleveland to look at. Arguably their best player doesn't it plays nine minutes in the first half and, and you're down. That's not good. Now the negatives for New York. I know Julius Randle is coming off an injury, but seven for twenty and three for ten from three. That's not that's not gonna cut it. I actually I felt he played play. relatively well. He set the tone early at those twelve he, points. Early, that, early. Yeah. Early, right. he made some good shots, yeah, especially with that with that um, left side uh, three. But I mean, seven to, for twenty is just not going to cut it, man. That, that's not going to work. That it, that's not a, a recipe for success for this uh, Knicks team. Uh, and you know, maybe we'll get into him later. But RJ Barrett also played like crap. I mean, two for twelve, one for five from three. That I, I'm not surprised. Uh, I called it once we started this show. I told you guys that. Listen, he's a solo guy, All right? And and I saw it. This 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 happened for me. I first ever watched RJ in uh, in the March Madness tournament uh, when Duke. Uh, no, they play for Duke, right? They did yeah, play for Duke, yes. Uh, with Zion and, and Cam Reddish, and just watching the second half late, I I I got an understanding of who RJ Barrett was. He wanted to be the guy. He didn't want to give the ball to Zion. He wanted to, even if Zion had a mismatch or even if Zion had it going, he wanted to be the guy. I saw that. So I, I, he's a solo guy and he's not a good shooter. That's he's that. a guy that you have to build your offense around. And Duke, he had a lot of the sets going to him. In the NBA, you know, RJ Barrett's not Jimmy Butler. There's very few of those guys that can't be a good shooter and yet still are great. I think that's the thing. He doesn't fit in off the ball in a winning environment uh-huh. on the offensive end. Nope. Uh, and yeah, the, and I, IQ is going to have to play better. Uh, they're going to need him. I, 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 what did he do? He went 0 for, 0 for 5 uh, from the field, only played 24 minutes. So he, he's going to, they're going to need him uh, if they're going to uh, win this series, too. Honestly, they're not going to need much, though, against this Cavaliers bench. Like, my thought, Brandon, is that the Knicks should bench RJ Barrett. It's not because uh, RJ stinks. He gave him four steals. He had some assists. 
It's a matter of, to get RJ right, have him play against that Cavaliers bench that has no meat on the bone at all. Get him into a rhythm in that second unit and start Josh Hart, who was huge for them on the offensive glass. That's what I mean real quickly. He didn't have a great game. It really doesn't matter because what you're up against is probably the worst bench out of any team in the entire NBA. I think it's worse than the Denver Nuggets bench. At least they have Bruce Brown, who they can credibly rely on. The Suns have Torrey Craig and a couple of different wings like Josh Akogi who can yeah. really make a difference. The Cavaliers don't have that. They're basically playing four and five out there, especially if Jetty Osmond doesn't shoot two of three in every other game in this series. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I, you're probably harder on Karis LeVert. I, I don't expect Karis LeVert to go one for, one for yeah. seven again. I, I think he, he's a better player than that. He, he's better than one for seven. Uh, but like, like I was saying with quickly, uh, I don't expect him to go over again, basically, is what I'm, I'm getting at. So it's it is going to be a different game when he's playing and positives on the Nick side. Brunson didn't get discouraged by the foul trouble in the first half. He came out in the second half. And let me get this right. Scored 21 points. I mean, shout out Jalen Brunson. And, and we talked about De'Aaron Fox's quickness. This guy's first step. It, I mean, there were a couple of times yeah. that I just went, dear God. Uh, so, so the guy wasn't – I mean, he did I, – I forget who was guarding him, uh, but it was probably a Kuro or, or, or Osman, but just darted on him. And I was like, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? Uh, so – and then Josh Hart, like you said, 17 and 10, that's great. I don't expect him to, to, to give another 17 and 10 game, but that's the type of energy and spark that he provides off the bench and you want him to start. I have no no qualms with that. I think he's he's, he's another guy like a, a, a Dante DiVincenzo is talking about, championship player right there, championship player. But let's talk about the Cavs. Unless you want to – do you want to, you know, give Tibbs any credit, John? Or, I do want to give Tom Tibbs no credit because, you know – He's a coach that does always prepare a lot in the regular season. And one of his philosophies is, and I love this, when I played basketball, I had coaches that get pissed at me when I leave a dog shit shooter open. I think that's a great philosophy. For a Cavalier team that gets really nothing offensively outside their backcourt, he let that fifth guy open, and that allowed the Knicks to play aggressive on the ball because while the Knicks, pro- sorry, while the Cavaliers are probably the best backcourt in the NBA, Brandon, they do have an issue, and that's a lack of versatility. They're going to attack you the same ways with the pick and roll every single time. It's not like they have, uh, what's his face, the guard from the Nets, Karis LeVert attacking you from the wings. No, he's going to have some chaotic drive, probably turn over the ball, if not brick a layup. He's a lot like R.J. Barrett, where you just can't trust him off the ball. He's not scalable. And so when you look at the Cavaliers guards getting pressured to one one now they're kicking it to a guy like Isaac Okoro who's now in a rhythm. And I, and I feel like Thibodeau, with his bench being ready, but also him being so aggressive on the ball and pick and roll, it took away what the Cavaliers do best. And it kind of neutralized that. In spite of Donovan, dude, he had 38 points. I didn't mention it. He played out of his mind, and that still was not enough to get the Cavaliers their game one W. You are muted, though. Still muted, actually. I think you're muted in stream yard. Okay, I got it now. Um, one thing on the uh, one thing on the uh, last thing on the Knicks that we talk about the Cavs. Uh, you said leaving wide open. That, that is a great listen. If Ricardo is on the court, if he can't, you're not making threes. I'm leaving you wide open. We've seen it basically uh, against almost any team. If you have a bad three point shooter, Draymond Green, name the guys. I mean, Popovich was was telling his players to literally back off a of LeBron James. Uh, even when he was a Miami Heat, uh, on the Miami Heat. So it, it's just a smart game plan to do. One thing, though, there was a play where Julius Randle left Garland wide open in the corner, uh, and he ran out on oh, – I forget who had the ball. I think it was probably Donovan Mitchell or something. Uh, he uh, just, like, closed out on him in the middle, and then it was just wasn't smart. And then the guy kicked it out to Garland, and he cashed in on the three-point shot. You can't do that. You, you can't leave a Garland wide open from three. That's just not a smart play. But – on to the, the, uh, the, the Cavs. You were incredibly high on them. I, the, the Spider is going to need some help if they're going to win this series. Uh, he can't do it by himself, man. I, and I know he had an incredible game, 38 points. Uh, I think he shot 50%, almost 50, 14 of 30 from the field. But there were some shots that I didn't agree with him taking, that he was just heat checking, especially from three that I did not like. Uh, But 
he wasn't getting any help. I mean, Garland taking only 13 shots. I think he has to take more shots. Yes. I think he has to be more aggressive. One assist is not going to cut it for Garland either. I mean, I need you to be more of a playmaker. I know that's asking a lot, score more and assist more. But listen, buddy, it's the playoffs. You're the second guy on this team. We need you to produce. He's playing 43 uh, minutes. Yeah. So. Mobley. I know you were incredibly high on him, John. I mean, you had some praise about him saying he could be the next Kevin Garnett. Defensively, maybe. Offensively, it's <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Garnett in his age twenty-one. We talked about Jimmy Butler missing level. some easy shots yeah. at the rim. This year, guy. So, so here's the thing: you talked about it. You mentioned it. Darius Garland needs to play on the ball. If the Cavaliers are going to win the series, it's not going to be the way they played in Game One. Uh. They need to put him off the ball and have him attacking secondary closeouts and such because. Darius Garland had such a small use during this game. And Donovan was taking those tougher three-point looks. Yeah. Now, he made six of them, but he also took 16. Yeah. And I feel like Evan Mobley gave Julius Randle trouble. Now, he does yeah. lack some power, so Randle can definitely drive on him and get his shoulder. He's, he's going he's gonna to build into his, his body. He's still a young guy. He's going to build yeah. for mature. Mobley went 4-13, though, because he's not an above-average player at his position offensively yet. And mm. at 21, you shouldn't really expect that because – with the Cavaliers having to deal with those two-on-ones, there weren't many opportunities from the not kick it out to an elite knockdown shooter. We had Jenny making some looks, but for a team that shot 32% in this game, Mobley's best making slips and then a simple read, a dump-off pass or a kick out. His best skill offensively is passing. But when guys aren't making shots, you're neutering that ability and you're allowing him to be a scorer exclusively. He can finish plays, but it gets Mitchell Robinson who had himself a stout game at the rim. It just in his playoff debut didn't come easy. Now, he was great defensively on Julius mm. Randle. Randle has not seen that before. But 11 rebounds, five offensive, that was the positive. The negative was he wasn't finishing plays, and it shows. Look, Jared Allen's a solid offensive option. He had four assists. But Garland needs to have a way bigger offensive role to diversify this mm. offense a little bit. And it's it's tougher because Garland's elite skill, it's not playing in isolation. It's playing in pick and roll. And the Knicks are well equipped to play that for as long as Isaac Okoro doesn't make shots. Yeah. The good news, Brian, is that I think he will start to make some. If you leave a shooter in the NBA open long enough, they're going to have some games where they shoot three or four. And those games, the Cavaliers will win. The question is, in all of the other games, there's probably going to be more of them than not in the series. How are they going to get that offensive production? How are they going to get that shot making outside their backcourt? Because, look, they may have the better duo. Yeah. They're going to need something offensively from those other guys, whether it's Evan Mobley stepping up and being that two-way reliable presence. They don't, they don't have a two-way player on this team, really. It, it is Evan Mobley. They need him to be that. Yeah. Or is it one of these hopscotch, wing, hopscotch wins off the bench who have all been unreliable this year? I, I, I don't I, think I, it's going to be a Levert. Listen, I mean, you make a lot of good points. Uh, one thing I want to speak on that, that you said about Mobley and his passing ability, I, I instantly thought of that one play where Mitchell um, – Got the ball, pump fake the three, laser pass to Mobley, and then Mobley did the behind the back to uh, Allen. That was just a great play, a great ball movement. Um, but where are they going to get this from? You say, Mo uh, listen, you say Mobley, you shouldn't expect that from a 12. This is the playoffs, man. We need you. We need you to do something, man. We need you to. Four for 13 is not going to cut it. It's a lot like, like Bam. Yeah. Karis Levert, well, Bam has a better uh, mid range game at least. But yes, I, I see what you're saying on that. Karis Levert. Uh, like I said, I don't expect him to go one for seven or 0 for three. Um, is he liable to do that? Yes, but I, I, he was taking a lot of bad shots that game. I think he was pressing a lot. So he just needs to get a little more comfortable, play more in himself, and, and I think he'll start knocking his shots down. Ricky Ruby only gave you six minutes. Uh, he had <laughs> – this guy is just so – I mean – He's got a pretty damn good handle. He made one great move where he crossed over to the right, had a wide open layup, and just <laughs> don't know what happened, man. He missed that. Negative uh, nine in six yeah. minutes. Ch uh, Chetty Osman, um, he, he came off the bench. He didn't play the entire first quarter and then came in the second quarter, which I was happy about because I was like, oh, you're not going to play Chetty Osman? Uh, but, yeah, def defensively, uh, he he couldn't he couldn't handle uh, Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson is too quick for him. Uh he wasn't yeah. terrible defensively. Like, I think he gives them enough of what they need. He's a he's, he's tough. Defense. Yeah, he's tough and he's going to fight. Like, right? He's not going to give up. But I just think the quickness of Jalen Brunson is going to be a little too much. Now, they were 
they were doing a uh, I feel like it was in the first half they were doing a I know it was only nine, nine minutes but they were doing a pretty good job of defending Jalen Brunson well where I was like they were basically guarding his left hand like they were saying go right um, and I thought that caused a little bit of trouble at Jalen but then I guess they either I, I didn't notice it in the second half so they either got away from it or Jalen just started t- uh, taking advantage of it but yeah I I, I, I think it's got to be Garland, Lavert. Everybody's got to step up, and I think Mitchell's got to take a couple less shots. Like I, I want him taking at least twenty shots a game, but thirty is a little too much. It, it, you got to get these other guys involved, and I think they have to. Garland, especially, I think he's got to be more aggressive. I, I do. He's got a very good mid-range game, uh, so he's got to be more aggressive in getting these shots. And I, you say the Knicks are very good at uh, guarding the pick and roll. Well, listen. How many times do we sit when we watch a basketball game? We say, wow, that's great defense. And then the shots go in and it falls. You're like, that's just better offense. That's sometimes just got to do it. You got to match it and, and you got to go pick and roll. If you believe in Garland and Mobley, well, then let's go. It's the pick and roll league. That's but, true. It's just the Knicks perimeter players, perimeter, not their yeah. line, are much bigger. Josh Hart is going to do a lot defensively on the glass. And I think yes. that's the holdup where they're going to play physical. Uh, my expectation for the series, it was Cavaliers in six. You know, Brian, I'm going to make it Cavaliers in seven just because I've watched this Cavaliers offense throughout the regular season. I, I've been aware it's not just the Knicks rebounds, the Knicks pace. The Cavaliers were at the slowest pace in the league. This was mm-hmm. something Romain talked about. And the Knicks in transition, they got out and running. It was the run with the Bulls. And that's something the Cavaliers don't do as well. Two smaller guards in the backcourt, they're not a very good transition defense. That was the one I guess, concern in spite of being the number one ranked defense this season. So the Knicks transition attack, the offensive rebound, and the pick and roll coverage is what I think is going to make this probably the closest series out of any in the first round. I'll say this. I'm sticking with Cavs in seven, but I'm worried. And if their bench doesn't play better and they don't get any, you know, more offensive production from other guys other than um, Mitchell and Garland, I'm telling you right now, the Cavs can go home in five. Okay. Because it's, th- listen, the Knicks are deeper. They play harder. They have the energy. It's, it's, these guys are here, man. And this, this, they did that in Cleveland. I know game one is the toss up, and I always say that, but this game two, listen, you cannot lose game two. You, the, I know must win is, is kind of, you know, hard to say if one game in, but, more than most you players. drop game two, you're going to MSG, and you think those fans are going to be wild, man. They're not coming back if they go down 3 1, if they lose two of the next three games. Um, I, I know a lot of people tend to overreact to game one, but there is a pretty big red flag here. It's that the Cavaliers they're reliant on four players, and the Knicks have eight guys. 